I think you can make a feature film regardless of what circumstances that you're in. I was working as a cleaner at McDonald's and that's how I made my second feature film. Action. Anybody that's been following my channel knows that I made an industry feature film many years ago. That was my first film. You know the conventional way where today everybody's making films for nothing. You know, my first film was a few hundred thousand budget set between Scotland, Delhi and Las Vegas. Traditional route, went to Cannes, got sales agents, got producers. Ended up wasn't a great experience because I had no real experience in making films. You know, I should have done my apprenticeship making small films, but it wasn't as easy as today to do that, you know. Anyway, cut a long story short. I had such a, a not great experience on it, so I got other offers, I'd done well. I screwed those offers up because I just wasn't in the right place after the experience of that. So I really kind of drifted for a few years. I really kind of went off the rails for quite a bit. So I got myself in a situation in my early 40s when I ended up working at fucking McDonald's as a cleaner. Cleaning a car park, lifting little fucking pickles off of burgers everywhere in the car park. Which was quite a depressing time looking at myself in my early 40s and go, what happened? I thought I'd started my film career, it all went tits up. When my movie first came out in Scotland, it had it done really well. I had like 50 copies in the video store. You know, it was Robert De Niro titles with small independent movies, like four fucking titles. And my movie had like 50 titles, 50 copies in the video stores. My cousin called me up, his video store. David has got 70 copies here. Other people, in fact, people told me years later, they went to the video store and there was copies everywhere. So it done really well specifically in Scotland on television and New Year's Eve it was released as well. So people recognised me, some people recognised me in the car parks thought what happened, you know. But something strange happens, it really gets a rock up your backside. I think if you're a creative and it's in your DNA and it's in your spirit and in your heart, you can never get rid of that. So, but if you're no creating, you start to implode self-destruct inside and it goes a negative way. If you can paint, you can sit and paint. If you write novels you can sit and write novels or sculpture or whatever if you're playing a band you can sit in a room with a guitar filmmaking is like you need a team of people even at the smallest level you still need some permission you still need some money so that's the frustrating side even reacting you have to wait for a fucking job after about a year there less than a year there i started to get really frustrated and it was the early days of the internet you know the big social platforms weren't even there, Twitter wasn't there, etc. So this was probably back in 2009 or 2008, something like that. But there was social platforms like MySpace, so I went on, I connected with some people there, connected with a film teacher in a college, a local college in Glasgow, ended up speaking to him, and I just went, I need to make something, I need to start again. I need to go back to that way that I learned from your Robert Rodriguez's and Christopher Nolan's that they started off with no money. Well, I'd started off with a budget and fucked that up. I needed to go back the way and learn my apprenticeship with no money and start a film from nothing, you know, the, the way that they did and the way that a lot of filmmakers started off. So I ended up going to a film college in Glasgow and to try and get some film students to try and get a camera because in those days you know it was before iPhones would even existed before DSLRs existed where you had flip camcorders that were just starting to come in and so it was mainly camcorders or professional camcorders so I ended up getting into college getting a bunch of students together the film was at the time when there was a lot of found footage movies because before DSLRs came in and made your film look like a film there was the found footage movies like Paranormal Activity etc a few years after the Blair Witch but in 2008 2009 there was a lot of this paranormal activity stuff so I didn't want to do a horror found footage I thought I'll do a sort of an action sort of military found footage I had this idea about a young film student that hangs about with a bunch of mercenaries before they do an attack somewhere and he gets to hang about with them for a day before they go in this attack and before they all die etc so it was very short very grainy very gritty and uh, called Mission X so I actually found a film student that walked in the room dressed in military gear had his own camera owned his own camera he ticked every box he was great to go on with grant timmons so i cast him as the lead role i was going to be in one of the leads and there was eight seven or eight other guys you know it was like an ensemble cast these other mercenaries i just started i got the camera started shooting and i started shooting for weeks and months with me and the film student character we just shot tons of the film but it got to a point where i knew this sort of story needed action and needed guns and needed shit like that if you're going to do what it says on the tin there was no crowdfunding back then it really wasn't like that the crowdfunding had really started so it was money from mcdonald's any money i could save 20 quid here 50 there 100 there so i started shooting the film and it got to a point where i couldn't do these action scenes you know because doing action back then before the digital effects you still needed some money so i ended up there was a guy at mcdonald's who was a supervisor and he was a fan of my first film he'd seen it he brought in a dvd he came in with all these sports cars and stuff he came from a wealthy family but he was working at 
McDonald's to get a job, you know. So he ended up seeing what I was doing, seeing the footage and going, you know, can I be a part of this? And I go, well, what, in what way would you mean you want to be in it? He goes, oh, I don't want to be in it. Can I just be part of it? Can I just be a producer or something? So he ended up giving me a couple of thousand quid, which was going to fund the action sequences and a few other scenes. So my point I'm trying to make, when you're out there and you're doing, you come across other opportunities, you come across other collaborators, potential funders, when you've started to move and you've decided to move to make something happen and not just waiting. So that ended up getting the guys together and we shot more scenes because this was shot over a year. We shot with a lot of the guys together and I wanted the gun battles to be authentic and to shoot gun battles back then without any special effects. Again, I'm not going to get into the whole Alec Baldwin thing. We know how important that is, safety. I've got another video, how I deal with guns in film, so I'll leave that for later. But the main thing was, I need up, even back then, I knew how important it was for safety with guns, because I'd shot with guns in my first movie. I had a dedicated professional armourer in my first movie with a budget. But in this film, I didn't have a budget. So I connected with an armourer in Scotland who worked in big movies and TV serials, and he says, look, I don't have much money. And I says, look, I can make, I was building websites at the time, I could make websites for people. So he didn't have a website for his work, so I said, I'll make your website. So we done a batter exchange thing there for the website, and he decided to come along with his team, really professional. He had these AK-47s, and we were actually shooting real AK blank firing 40, uh, AK-47s, um, which again is back to the Ali Baldwin thing, where I moved, I had a few million, I had no fucking budget on this, and my priority was safety. But that's another video, you know, how important that is with guns. Today I wouldn't shoot with blank firing guns, and just shoot digital but this was a way back in 2009 2008 anyway we've done these crazy gun battles in the center of the city in a glasgow on a saturday morning <laughs> Which I had to hire the police, which is another video we'll talk about later with the guns. So I had to go around every single door in that area, knocking people's doors to see if they were okay, we were going to do this because we were going to shoot the hell out of guns on a Saturday morning, which was really bloody loud. But it gave the film another production value and authenticity and made it real, you know, and we shot another gun battle in an underground place again with the police there and everything else. So, I mean, I mean, I'm fucking for Christ's sake. You get yourself something and that's it sorted, all right? I'll see you when I see you. Stop fucking phoning me, right? I've got stuff to do the other day. It's important stuff, okay? Aye. Toodle pip. Goodbye. Who's the fucking exit? Who the fuck is that? Come on, anywhere. Come on. I fucking know you. I'm not fucking with you, mate. Where's the fucking exit? Fucking sick. Finished the film, got it cut, took a while. The guy that played the film student helped me edit, because I edited the film, but he done a lot of some of the effects in there and the grading and back then where today I do all my own stuff but back then I was still learning I was learning every aspect the sound wasn't great but you can get away with no great sound in a sort of found footage movie but I ended up having to put subtitles in there with some stuff so we made the movie um, and uh, I decided I was going to you know apart from the first movie that I made which I wrote and directed I decided on this I'm producing it I'm doing everything I'm learning about every aspect so I ended up saying I was going to cut out the distributors and go straight to the cinema, the cinema with this one took it to the cinema one of the biggest cinemas in Europe which is in Glasgow a big multi-screen cinema it's huge and they took it to them and they loved the poster there was this very cinematic poster with all the guys and they said that they could see the poster in the foyer they looked at the film we done a test screening with the film and this thing was edited on a fucking old bad laptop and the cinema, I think it was the UGC, whatever, said that they'll take it in every single cinema in the whole of Scotland um, if I can get, you know, posters made and publicity materials. 
Cut long story short, um, again with my experience, but back in those days there was no crowdfunding. I needed five, between five and seven thousand to get all these materials so I could deliver it to the cinema. Didn't have any money because I'm working at fucking McDonald's. There was no crowdfunding back then, so I went to the local Scottish um, Scottish screen, you call them, where they support, they're supposed to support local talent and filmmakers and they give money to make films and whatever. And they says to me, and they're notorious for not giving fucking money to filmmakers, you know. They've got their choosy little bunch. And they more or less said, there's no criteria for me. And I went, I've, I'm not coming here looking for script money for an idea. I'm not looking here for a budget for a movie. I've made the film. I've actually got the cinema interested in taking the film. And there's no criteria for me for money for a few posters. So that kind of decided. But I decided in my first film that they were fucking useless. That's why I never went to, you know, they were useless. They were so unhelpful. I ended up getting the film funded um, in, in London. So in this second film, again, I made, I made another film. And they were so fucking unhelpful. And that's to this day. I don't, you know, I can't fucking stand the whole lot of them. Even though they've helped some films filmmakers that I've known that are great um, in general they're fucking useless you know they've got their favourites and stuff like that so the internet you could put your film on the internet even though it was early days put it on there and says right okay it's a learning curve it's part of my film school I've got moving again I've not got depressed after my first movie I'm making a film I've made it I'm moving um, and some people you know um, there was a guy in America screened it I think he'd done a sort of drive screen an outside screening I think it was in somewhere like Portland and he screened it and uh, God knows how the Americans understood it with the accents and <laughs> but he says it went down well which was great but then somebody I uh, connected with a couple of filmmakers Nikki Alonso Oklahoma Ward who were filmmakers and an actress two of them were filmmakers she was producing them and they loved the film and loved my videos cut long story short I was trying to get a horror movie made a drive-in horror movie where I got a budget and it fell apart and he says why don't you come to here in Oklahoma we've got empty drive-ins um, Oak says you can, you know, do you want to act in one of my movies? He was making a film called Crawl or Die. So I went there and uh, I eventually made the film Screen there, you know, which I'll talk about later in another video. But my point that I'm trying to make is nothing is ever wasted. If you move, if you start to take action, if you start to no use excuses, it doesn't matter where the fuck you are. You know, I had an industry budget because some people say to me, it's all right for you, you got an industry budget. But then I was back in fucking right at the bottom, working at McDonald's and I still got a movie made with fuck all money, with fuck all permission, with nobody helping me. You know, apart from the people that get involved and I got it rolling. So there's no excuses you want to make something today and if that was back then when again the cameras were still rough there was no great sound units there was no phones there was no DSLRs you know it was early days of the internet there was no crowdfunding and I still got that made today we have fucking phone with the technology we've got today with all the platforms we've got today with all the social today there's no excuse no to be creative today to go out there and do it so that's why I wanted to share this little story you know because I've done it from both sides from an, an industry budget for a side where there was actually no approval at all but when you move, it gets action moving and you and you, it fires up your spirit and you're always progressing forward to the next thing. You know, there was no expectations for that film to make any big money. It just took me to the next level, to the next level, to the next level and build and build and grow. That's the whole point, you know. And you learn all these new skills because in my first movie, I didn't learn a great deal of skills because there's a designated sound team, there's a designated camera team, there's a, a designated on a bigger film, you know. But in this film, I had to learn everything. As the years have went on, I had to learn about lenses, about sound, about lighting, everything as, uh, you know, as time goes on. Um, anyway, thanks very much for watching. I'm just trying to share these videos, my experience, if it helps in any way for people that want to make films, get out there and start doing it and start you know, making excuses, just move. So thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please like, please subscribe. Um, check out my link if you're interested in any one-to-one -one consultations with film. And uh, thanks for watching.